name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we begin these 15 minutes of meditation upon the mystery of our Lord's ascension into heaven on this first Saturday, let's pause, as always, for some time of silence to lay aside all other worries and considerations and focus right now simply upon the living presence of Our Lady in her Immaculate Heart and Our Lord in His Sacred Heart. Ascendentem in celum, ita veniet, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. To the apostles, Jesus presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were still gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Our Lord turns the gazes of the apostles towards heaven, towards their true home. The ascension, the great fruit, a traditional fruit of the mystery of the ascension is hope. Hope that through the grace of God, he will bring us into heaven. That that's our true home, that so much suffering, so much sorrow in this valley of tears here on the earth is not our true home. There's something infinitely better that our Lord has in store for us. And he's gone ahead of us to prepare a place in his Father's house. And as we meditate upon this mystery of the Ascension, think about the fact the apostles are still asking, even after the 40 days, he's been teaching them for 40 days after his resurrection, after three years, after his passion and death and resurrection, after these 40 days of teaching, they're still asking him, are you now going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They still haven't understood the true nature of his kingdom and that their gaze should be turned towards heaven. And that gives hope for us if we feel, if you feel that you're slow to understand our Lord's teaching, slow to embrace his teaching, slow to grow along the path of holiness to which he calls all of us, then follow the advice, follow the example that the apostles give. Because right after he ascends into heaven, what do the apostles do? They return to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. And all these with one accord devoted themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. They spend the nine days between our Lord's ascension 
and Pentecost in the upper room, praying with the Virgin Mary and with some of the other disciples, but above all, with the Virgin Mary. That is what every weak disciple, just as the apostles were weak disciples, slow to understand, just as you and I are weak disciples, so much in need of God's grace, that's what is needed, is that time of prayer with the Virgin Mary. And so pause a few moments now to become aware of the presence of the Virgin Mary who wishes to guide you, not just today, but in all of your prayer. Speak to her about how much you need her help, how much you don't know how to pray, how much you don't know how to follow her son, and ask her, speak to her in a very simple language, as St. Alphonsus Liguori encourages us to, as your good mother, speak to her about your weaknesses and especially about your desire to have her guide you in everything, especially in prayer. Virgin Mary is the great teacher, the great guide in the spiritual life. And so let's look more closely at some of the great mysteries that took place in her Immaculate Heart at this moment. How would she have lived the moment of the Ascension, those moments after the Ascension? Surely her, her eager, her urgent, her, her ardent desire and hope would have been to join her son in heaven. She would have longed for that day, not because she was not willing to suffer on the earth, she was, and she knew how necessary her motherly presence still was for the apostles who she saw were still so weak, and so she was willing to, to suffer whatever her son wanted her to suffer still on the earth, and she knew he was infinitely close to her now, never would be separated from her in faith. He was always invisibly present. And yet, because of the ardor of her love for her son, for her Lord and her God, she longed for the day when she would be reunited with him fully, also with her glorified body in the splendor and the glory of heaven. Among true friends or among a mother and a son or, or spouses, when there's a deep, true love, you want that, you always want more uh, and, and that friendship to blossom ever more. And, and so Our Lady, above all, had her gaze turned towards what awaited her in heaven. She knew her son's promises, for example, the promise to prepare a place in his father's house. And so let's take a few moments in silence to contemplate the attitude of Our Lady's heart and to ask her to grant us some share of that ardent longing for heaven. Yes. 
As we meditate and contemplate Our Lady in the attitude of her heart, we can also meditate upon what will heaven be like? What is it that awaits if we cooperate with Him, if we're faithful to Him? What is it that awaits us in heaven? Perhaps the best phrase was St. Paul who, who said, eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor is it so much as entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love Him. Heaven is beyond anything that our minds can imagine. But think about the most beautiful moments in this world. Perhaps it's the moment of a family celebration when there's a tremendous joy, or perhaps it's a moment of hiking across the mountains and taking in that you, you enjoy hiking, and when you were hiking in the mountains, you had a day or days when you saw the earth and all of its beauty and splendor of a sunrise of the snow-capped mountains, or perhaps it's a moment in a game or sports, or a moment rejoicing by the ocean. The most joyful and beautiful moments of this life, where do those come from? Those come of, from the fullness of life that's present in heaven, present in the Holy Trinity. And so those are simply tiny glimpses of something that will be 10,000 times more, if you would, intense, and that will never be diminished. Even the best moments of our life, think about the, some of the happiest moments of your life, usually say it was an evening or a day or, or a weekend or a vacation or some moment of your life, there was maybe, there were maybe a couple of minutes or there was a certain moment that was the peak of that that was especially the greatest moment and the other moments were also wonderful but not quite as wonderful as that one moment. Well, in heaven there will never be a not quite as wonderful. Everything will be in a fullness of joy that we can't even imagine. So simply take a few moments now to give thanks to God for having prepared for you something beyond your wildest imaginations in terms of a fullness of life and joy. In this meditation for the step of axio, that is the step of an action, you might consider making the decision to have some conversations, or at least have one conversation, with someone you love and who shares the faith about how much you're looking forward to being with them in heaven one day. If you were, if you knew there was a great vacation coming up, you would be talking with your friends or with your family if they were going on the same vacation about how much you're looking forward to that, how wonderful it will be to share that vacation time with them. Well, how much more should we be willing to say to our friends or family, it will be so wonderful to be able to enjoy the fullness of life in heaven, to which will above all be that divine friendship with our Lord, but also in terms of uh, friendships or relationships will will blossom in a way that we can't imagine, but will be much more full and full of joy than they are here on the earth. So it can help to vocalize that with a family member or friend. It will be so wonderful to be able to rejoice with you in heaven. I'm really looking forward to that. So you may wish to make that resolution. Take some moments now to 
ask our Lord and Our Lady if that's something that they would like you to do with members of your family or with friends. And as the final step of our meditation of thanksgiving, take a few moments to adore and contemplate, sorry, to adore and thank our risen Lord, who's now glorious in heaven, there with Our Lady. Thank them, thinking about the fact they're right now rejoicing in the joy of heaven. Thank them for all the graces they've given you during these 15 minutes of meditation. <laughs> 